hate your sin, but they love you as a sinner. <laughs> they say your essence is hateful. In other words. What a stupid, casuistic thing to say. What a crappy euphemism. Don't, don't put up with things like that. But I want to hear it from them. I want to hear people say that uh, the Holocaust never happened, if they, that's what they think. I want to hear Jews say that Arabs have to clear out of Palestine to make room for them. If they, that's what they think, I'm very firmly non-Zionist. So they have to be able to say it. I'll defend this for anybody, but if I'm going to defend it for everybody else, I'm going to insist on it for myself too, and I'm going to insist that they respect me back. How bad is that? No. How bad is that? That's all we're asking. The government says, no, we take that right away. We apply it selectively. You never know what it will be you're going to say in advance that someone might not like or some cop might misinterpret. That is illegal. In America, it would be unconstitutional. We have to have the right to defend ourselves. And I will go on to say that those who uh, are prepared to use violence or the threat of it to enforce this, what they're essentially saying to Blair is, do you want this law or do you want violence in the streets that would uh, split the labor vote? That's what they're saying. It's a plain incitement, a plain incitement. I'm not going to have that. I won't be talked to in that turn of ways. Would you? No. no. Well, shape up then. No, I'm not. I, uh, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm on your side, Christopher, believe me. But um, you, you keep saying clear, that. No, it was, clearly a, away. it was clearly a, a strategic or a, rather a tactical, um, uh, a, a tactical development on your part. You were sort of saying, let's have this law and let's bring it on. Um, uh, as if to if, say, let's bring this to a fight. If they're willing to say, as they do, look, um, half of women are condemned to chattelhood. Mm. Excuse me, half the species, excuse me, half people in this audience mm. are condemned to chattelhood by the literal words of the Torah, the Quran, and the, and the New and Old Testament. Are you, going to, are you going to bargain that away? No. Are you going to make a compromise? Are you going to split the difference? I'm not. No. The point comes when people are given, as you rightly want them to have, the right to say such things yeah, that offend you, offend us all yes. in this room, but, but you want them, yeah. give them the power to say these things. Yeah. When they grow in their numbers and their power, they have the right not merely to say but to impose them, as indeed the Sharia law in Islamic states impose chattelhood on women. Now, you, there is a dilemma here about the persuasiveness of religious faith, which spreads so powerfully that the liberal agenda, which wishes to extend tolerance to them, is overwhelmed by their capacity to bring pressure to bear for laws against incitement to religious hatred. So we're talking numbers here, we're talking social pressures, we're talking politics. How do we, the liberal agenda, deal with that? Well, um, you're the liberal agenda. <laughs> am I the liberal agenda? I'm being, to some it. extent, devil's avocado here, but I would, um, I would say um, that um, if we're talking about um, fighting the tide of ecclesiasticism, if one wants to call it that, of religiosity, or if we are talking about the fact that we sense there is a war on the part of, mm. let's say, to our ears, I suspect it obviously comes from the fundamentalist right, religious right, the, 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 the whatever one likes to call it in, in the United States, which seems bizarrely to be trying to overturn that very constitution that Christopher mentioned. It's very anti-Thomas Paine, very anti-Jefferson, it's extremely against all the tenets that are, are on which the great American experiment was founded. Um, if we have that as an enemy on the one side, and we have, it seems, uh, in the public imagination, swarms of uh, black-clad um, uh, Muslims on the other, and that Islam is at one, uh, on one flank and, and the fundamentalism on the other, and we're being squeezed in between, um, then yes, we have a real problem. But is that... Is that is that really what, what we're facing? No, I mean, no. you see, if you're going to be rational about what these religions are, I would say, and it's quite scary, that a lot of what one's fighting in Islam is, is racial or is at least tribal. We're talking about the customs well, and, no, and of the people from a section of the world, essentially from Morocco now to Indonesia. But they've taken the Arabic customs. They've taken Arabic taboos. If you're going to be anthropological about it, Islam is a series of letters and documents written by the Muhammad 
Um, no, not written by him. Well, dictated by him, I should to say. Him. But endlessly dictated. Very important. Or dictated by God, and of course, he wrote... I mean, twice by Satan. Twice, and, and by, twice Satan. by Satan. Twice by Satan. And so on, yes. You have right. to believe that. But whatever, yeah, yes, no. Forgetting what you believe... Um, uh, well, he was flattered no, by what saying, I'm saying that you is know that's on, what they think. Yes, but on top of that issue as whether or not the prophet was the prophet, whatever, uh, whatever means he got his scripture from, this was overlaid on, on a series of tribes in Saudi Arabia, what is now mostly Saudi Arabia, Arabia Deserta, as it used to be wonderfully called. Uh, uh, and, um, in one's young day. And the, the clothes, the customs, the way women were treated, the, the, the polygamy, the, um, the, the, the way settlements, law, essentially, were, done, were all, all prefigured the existence of Muhammad. But once they were inspired or inflamed by the Muhammadism, they became a very successful tribal, as it were, like Tartars or Mongols, which, who happened not to carry with them religion, but with, you know, tributes and exchange and a very good way of running Russia for 300 years or whatever. So it is in that sense, not just pure religion that applies to everyone and is universal, it is the imposition of the customs and tribal uh, manners of a particular group from a particular part of the world, hence the dress. So that if I became a uh, Muslim tomorrow, I would wear Arab dress. Let's not mm. palter with the truth, that it's an obvious fact. Um, now, Christianity hasn't gone that way, nor has Buddhism. You can wear whatever clothes you, you, you want. But it, to, therefore, to say that we are purely addressing this is not true. It is a, it is a, it is a you know, there, there's a lot of complexity here that can't simply be addressed by looking at two, two we, warring... But we're, addre we're addressing the extremism of people who wish to impose on us the mm. tolerant, tolerant of them too, their way of thinking, and this is a growing phenomenon of world mm. politics. Is, uh, is that true in America or not? Look, just... Look, sweetie. <laughs> on this point of the devil's avocado... Yes. I'll just have to make a quick point. The, his, holy, the late holiness, uh, his late holiness, the Pope asked me to testify against Mother Teresa in her sainthood hearings, which I went to do. People still think, non-Catholics still think, that there is a devil's advocate, an avocado. Yes, yes. The present Pope abolished it because it was an inconvenience to the fast-tracking of sainthood and beatitude and has created twice as many saints combined and doubled as his first, last ten predecessors. So I had to represent the devil pro bono. <laughs> so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Second, of all the differences you mentioned, the grand diversities of tribe. Mm. So you've, you, you left out the most important one, the confessional one. What did Christians used to fight about and kill about? What kind of Christian you should be? Mm. The Thirty Years' War was a massacre between Christians. It was eventually decided in Europe only out of existence.